Hello, hello guys, welcome back to this class with Teacher Juan. Today we are learning about the simple present, uh, but before that I hope you are having a very good week and also we are waiting for the weekend so we can relax a little bit, enjoy and be with the family, with the friends and some parties, you know. But before we start talking about the simple present, let me tell you that you have to remember a little bit about the uses of the verb to be, <clears throat> and not only that the verb to be means ser o estar. So there are different uses of the verb to be that we need to remember all of the time when we are working with a simple present. Why is that? Because we have two different ways of expressing or talking about the present, which is with the verb to be and with different verbs. But now let's start with this. The simple present, welcome to the jungle, and let's start. First of all, we need to understand that when we use the simple present to talk about facts, that means hechos, realidades, routines, rutinas, and habits, habitus. And there are two different forms to express the simple present. The simple present with the verb to be, am, is, are, and the present with the auxiliary, do, and does. The different uses of the verb to be is number one to introduce people for example i am steven and this is isabella and this is my daughter alicia to talk about age i am 24 years old and my father is 50. to talk about jobs to talk about occupations for example i am a teacher and my wife is a doctor to talk about nationality alex is from ireland and sonia is from spain to talk about feelings, I am scared, she is very tired. To talk about color, for example, our dog is black, his eyes are blue. To talk about prices, to talk about cost, it is seven pounds, this t-shirt is twenty dollars. To talk about the weather, to talk about the climate, it is sunny today, it is very cold this morning. To talk about the time, for example, what time is it? It's 10 past 4. To talk about descriptions, he is very short and thin. These cars are old and cheap. As you can notice, these are some of the uses of the verb to be. But we have, uh, we have it in here in a different way and adding some more. For example, profession, trade or occupation, number one. One is a teacher and you are students. Number two, to talk about nationality. For example, Raul is American and we are Mexican. To talk about the age. For example, I am 42 years old and you are 16 years old. To talk about condition, state, emotion, feeling. Laura is happy. They are hungry. Number five, to talk about the size or the shape. For example, my house is big the dog is small. To talk about the color, for example, the cat is black, our chairs are blue. To talk about place, location, position, for example, we are in the classroom, I am at home. And the number eight, to talk about a characteristic, a description, for example, Laura is tall and you are intelligent. Once that we understand what are the uses of the verb to be, we can continue with the structures of the simple present verb to be. But before that, you have to know that the different uses of the verb to be does, because when we are working with a simple present, it is important to identify that we are working with the verb to be or a different verb. Another thing that it is very important to remember over here are two concepts. The concept of a noun. But what is a noun? Well, a noun is the name that we give to people, animals, things, and places. For example, glass. For example, teacher. Juan. Cell phone. Dog. School, etc. Remember, the noun is the name that we give to people, animal things, or places. A pronoun is a word that replaces the noun in a sentence. 
as well as we have over here personal pronouns that you already know them like I, you, he, she, it, we, they. In the positive simple present with the verb to be, with I you're going to say am. You are, he is, she is, it is, we are, and they are. The positive contraction, I'm, you're, his, she's, it's, we're, they're. Within the negatives, you have I am not, you are not, he is not, she is not, it is not, we are not, and they are not. In the contraction, negative, I'm not, you're not, he's not, she's not, it's not, we're not, they are not. But let's see it in a more clear way. To be with the simple present, in the positive sentences, you need the subject and the verb to be, and is, are, and the complement. Example, I am sick. You're a policeman. She is lucky. We are at school. Within the negatives, the only thing you have to do is to add not to the verb to be. I am not sick. You're not a policeman. She isn't lucky. We aren't at school. There are questions. Remember that whenever we are working with just no questions or close questions, those questions that you can only answer with yes or no, you have to switch the auxiliary to the subject. You begin with the verb to be and is are the subject in this case and the question, uh, complement and the question mark. Am I sick? Are you a policeman? Is she lucky? Are we at school? But there are also other types of questions that are called WH questions that we are just going to be working with in next classes. But we have some examples over here and they are used to get extra information. They are also called open questions. The structure is a WH word plus the verb to be and is are subject complement and the question mark. Example, where are you from? I'm from Mexico. What is your name? My name is Juan. We have it in here in a different way. For the affirmative singular, I, you, he, she, it. For example, I am happy, you are at school, he is hungry, she is a nurse, it is big. With the plural, we are early, you are students, they are quiet. Within the negative, remember that the only thing you have to do is to add not to the verb to be. I am not sad. You aren't at home. He isn't thirsty. She isn't a, pil a pilot. It isn't small. In the plural, we aren't late. You aren't teachers. They aren't noisy. Remember that within the questions, just no questions, switch the auxiliary to the beginning. Affirmative, they are happy. Interrogative, are they happy? Possible answers, yes they are, or no they aren't. She is rich. Is she rich? Yes she is, and no she is. Remember the contractions within the negatives. I am not, he is not, I'm not, he's not. You're not, we're not, you're not, we're not. You aren't, we aren't. They are not, they are not, and they aren't. What is the difference within the present with the auxiliary do and does? Well, as I was telling you before, you have to remember that when we are working with the simple present, it is important to identify if we are working with the verb to be or a different verb. And in order to do that, you have to remember what are the uses of the verb to be. If you are not working with one of the uses of the verb to be, therefore, you are working with a different verb. So within the present simple, remember that the verb to be is subject, am, is, are, and the predicate in affirmative, negative, subject, am, is, are, not, and the predicate, and interrogative, am, is, are, subject, and the predicate. Now, within the present simple with different verbs, you are going to need the subject, the verb, and the object in the affirmative. In the negative, subject, auxiliary don't, auxiliary doesn't, 
verb in the base form and the object. In the interrogative, do and does, subject, verb, and object, and the question mark. What are the uses? Well, to express a general truth, the sun rises in the east. To talk about a habit, I play badminton every Tuesday. To talk about future timetables, our train leaves at 9 in the morning. To talk about future after when or until. For example, I won't go out until it stops raining. To talk about a permanent situation or repetitive situation. He works in a bank. For a newspaper headline, for example, man enters space. With non-progressive tenses, I believe that you are innocent. When telling stories, suddenly the window opens and a masked man enters. For giving directions and instructions, first of all, you break the eggs and whisk with sugar. As you can notice, these are some of the uses of the present simple, and we have over here some of the examples. So far, so good. Let's continue. Now, to form the simple present, you have to be very, very, very careful with the third person, which is he, she, and it. In affirmative sentences, simple present, third person, he, she, and it, the verb is going to change into the S form. Let's see it over here. Affirmative sentences. I like, you like, he, she, and it likes. We like, you like, and the like. In the negative form, it is exactly the same. For he, she, and it, you are going to use doesn't. But your verb is going to be in the base form, not with the letter S. Why? Because actually the auxiliary in here, it has the letter S. Example, I do not like, you do not like, he, she, it doesn't like, we do not like, you do not like, and they don't like. But also we have short forms. I don't like, you don't like, he, she, it doesn't like, we don't like, and they don't like. We have some examples over here. Remember that when you are working with affirmative sentences, third person, he, she, and it, you need the letter S. Example, he likes Hollywood movies. We love the food in this restaurant. He cries each time they give him an injection. She tries to talk to him, but he won't listen. They jump really high. As well as within the verb to be in the simple present, in this case we have interrogative forms, yes, no questions, and WH questions. The yes, no questions, you are going to say, do I, do you, does he, she, it, do we, do you, do they? And the WH questions, they begin with a WH word like what, where, who, how much, why, when, how often. For example, what do you like? Where does he live? Who lives here? Why do you work so hard? When does the train leave? How often do you come? Now, remember this part. Whenever you're working with affirmative sentences, simple present, third person, he, she, it, the verb is going to change into the S form. But you say, teacher, how can I change the verb into the S form? Well, let's continue with this. The rules for the third person singular, he, she, and it are, in general, we are going to add the letter S. For example, work, works. It, it's. Play, plays. Swim, swims. Write, writes. But when a verb ends in a consonant plus a Y, you are going to change Y to IES. For example, study, 
Consonant of Y. He studies English. She studies English. Cry. Consonant of Y. My dog cries all night long. Try. Consonant of Y. My mom tries a new sweater. Spy. Consonant of Y. My neighbor spies every day. Fly. Consonant of Y. A bird flies over the sky. When a verb ends in O, S, H, C, H, X, and double S, you are going to add E, S. For example, go, goes. Wash, washes. Watch, watches. Mix, mixes. Kiss, kisses. There are some exemptions to these rules. For example, the verb to be with the third person, simple present, is going to be is. The verb have or the simple present, third person, affirmative sentences is going to be has. This is very important to memorize. This is very important to learn because, remember, simple present, affirmative sentences, third person, he, she, it, the verb is going to change in one of these forms that you have over here with the letter S. So far so good, let's continue. So you have over here another chart talking about the simple present. I do not have the rights of some of the material that I am presenting over here, but it is important to take this material to explain in a very clear form what is the present simple tense? Affirmative, I, you, we, they, and the verb. He, she, it, the verb with the letter S. The third person verb needs the final L's in affirmative sentences. I speak English, he speaks Spanish, they live in London, she lives in Paris. Within the negatives, with I, you, we, and they, you say don't. With he, she, it, doesn't. And the verb remains in the base form. For example, the third person verbs lose the final S in negative sentences. Affirmative, I speak Spanish. Negative, I don't speak Spanish. Affirmative, she speaks Italian. Negative, she doesn't speak Italian. Remember that in the just no questions, you have to switch the auxiliary to the beginning. For example, do I, you, we, and they, and the verb in the base form. Does he, she, and it, and the verb in the base form. The third person verb lose the final S in questions. Affirmative, do you speak English? Interrogative, do you speak English? Affirmative, he speaks German. Interrogative, does he speak German? It is important to understand this chart, and one more time, the third person verbs in affirmative sentences, they need the letter S according to the rules that we've been working with. Now, we have some examples over here though, of simple present tenses. He plays football, third person, letter S. Kids like to play mobile games. He does his homework regularly. She wakes up early in the morning. We speak English every day. My parents live in Melbourne. They go to the to movies once a week. She loves to play tennis. It rains here every month. We like to take a bath in a river. My friends like to live a luxury life. Anne goes to church every week. He prays five times a day. Trains travel on railway tracks. My manager starts work on time. Soldiers fight for the country. The boss usually comes late. My mother cooks every day. They play basketball on Mondays and this chocolate tastes very delicious. You have to try to identify when you are working with the third person. He, Raul, the dog, the teacher, 
she, Maria, the teacher also, okay, also an animal, the dog. Uh, uh, when you are working with the third person, remember, you need to add the letter S, okay? I hope you have understood this in a clear way. If you have any questions, feel free to ask your questions below over here. And remember, give me over here a bell. So tell me if you like the video. And if you have any questions and you are my student, please feel free to send me a message, WhatsApp or via Classroom over there. So there is no trouble. I'm just going to be answering any questions that you have. I hope you have enjoyed the class and remember, portate mal, cuídate bien. Be good, be safe. Love you all and see you next time, my friends. Bye-bye.